In a world of growing population, declining resources and increasing climate change, there's an urgent need to move away from an economy which uses carbon-based energy and natural resources, regardless of limits, to one which works with nature's systems and runs on renewable sources of energy. In this transition to a low-carbon economy, new ways of producing and delivering energy, products and services are coming to the fore. These have major potential to grow economic development and generate job creation. The Western Cape has the advantage in South Africa and internationally of having abundant wind, solar and wave energy, as well as expert research capability and a skilled workforce. The Cape is well positioned to take the lead in developing green industry in South Africa and the continent. The Western Cape government has identified the green economy as a future growth potential uh, for our region in Africa and, and in the world. We see it from both inward investment point of view, so we understand the role that this economy is going to play and that's why we definitely focus on it. We believe that um, just coming out of the Department of Energy's Integrated Resource Plan, there will be a, between 18 to 20 billion rand a year in capital expenditures spent building renewable energy power plants. We think out of that there's potential for somewhere between 6 to 10 billion rand a year in new manufacturing business. And that manufacturing business can create somewhere in the order of 10,000 jobs. I think to kickstart the whole um, industry there will be a fair amount of equipment being imported and of course between Saldana and Cape Town we have the harbour facilities to do that. Geographically we, we are very well situated. We've got the resources, we're close enough to the major hotspots of renewable energy. Our key advantage globally and certainly within, within South Africa and the Southern African context in making the shift is the institutional and the human resources that we have available. Coupled with that I think we have um, a local and a provincial government who realises what's at stake. And so there's a political will and a process underway in, in making the shift. And I think those are the key ingredients. I think Western Cape um, is, is far ahead uh, as compared to other provinces. They've already done a strategic um, environmental assessment. And I think it's a very good um, step ahead because any investor sort of knows which size that you need to, to focus on. Practical examples of renewable energy are well established. The Darling Wind Farm has been operating for over eight years and sells its wind energy to the city of Cape Town. Investment in wind energy production in the Cape received a boost with the landing of massive moulds for the production of wind turbine blades for the South African and overseas export market. The wind energy is certainly a mature technology uh, and uh, we have seen that in Germany 20 years ago and I think uh, South Africa is now also going that route, this important route, to reduce their carbon footprint and to create an own industry in this regard and to employ people. When we are in full swing, uh, in around about three, four years time, we intend to have 400 people directly employed in our uh, operation. On a much smaller scale, installations such as these wind watt turbines are working to provide energy for homes in low-income housing areas such as Atlantis. Our drive is to bring this technology to the people, bringing the power to the people. It's amazing when you actually switch the, the systems on and the kids can at least put the TV on. What WindWatch is also doing is um, as we go into areas, we actually apply for uh, people within the community so we can train them and certify them uh, by WindWatch to actually install and maintain the systems. Also in Atlantis, the Cape Town City Council has set aside 100 hectares of land for the development of a green industries hub. I think the benefits for developers for locating within Atlantis is again in terms of access mobility, it is the land that's ready for development. Also there is, and we do know there's a large labour pool within Atlantis. We also know that there can be very huge spin-offs in terms of a multiplier effect whereby there's enough land to attract other 
similar or yes, related um, industries to that area. The city of Cape Town has also been instrumental in the Kuyasa project. This brought together a range of partners in setting up the world's first gold standard CDM or Clean Development Mechanism project. Solar water heaters, energy efficient lighting and ceilings for over 2,000 homes are part of the program. Companies are investing in solar power too. An installation at the Valera Wine Estate covers over 900 square meters and generates on average 300 megawatt hours of energy annually. This reduces the carbon footprint of the estate's wine, an important factor for export markets. Andre Portketter from EnergyWorks contracted MLT Drives to design and manufacture the inverters that are used in Valeria. It's the second largest I installation in the Southern Hemisphere. Now because of that investment from Valeria Wine Farm, we now have a completely new product that we can sell on to other customers. A company which has invested heavily in production capacity for the export market is Optimal Energy, with the Joule, South Africa's first electric vehicle. I think it was important for us to get an investment into the Western Cape, uh, but to put it in perspective, the you know, car industry is a huge industry, and the initial investment in terms of prototype development is in a, in a sense a thin edge of the wedge, to really now go from building prototypes by hand to a situation where you build 50,000 cars per year, uh, that's, that's the next big step and that still needs to be taken. So from our perspective, we want to keep the head office, the design office, the, the, the really creative side here in the Western Cape because I think it makes a lot of sense for that year. And by way of that, to get a lot more investment into the Western Cape. Green Cabs is a Cape Town company that is approaching sustainable transportation in a different way. We started the Green Cab in 2008. It was the initiative of four women who realized that we cannot continue to do business as usual in the tourism sector. What makes our service unique is the fact that we run on liquefied petroleum gas. And the reason we do that is that it reduces your car, the carbon emissions by up to 34%. And the harmful particulates that come out of the tailpipe is reduced by up to 87%. So you're looking at a much cleaner fuel. Also doing its share to reduce greenhouse gases while producing tons of soil enriching compost is Reliance. Instead of green matter going to the landfill where it could decompose and emit methane gas, it is first chipped into mulch and then laid out in rows and turned into nourishing compost for farms and gardens. The business has grown from uh, a very small startup um, where we employed three people. We now employ directly and indirectly well over 120 people in the company. We've invested uh, over 55 million and we're planning to invest another 200 million over the next year and a half. Green business is the only long-term sustainable business to be in. Any other business is depleting resources and, and you'll mine it or you'll you'll tap it as long as it's there and when it's gone you move on to the next thing. But if you can create a green business that's sustainable, um, it'll keep on going and going forever. At Spear Wine Farm, recycling of another kind takes place in a very natural way. Being a, a large wine producer, which is the core part of our business, uh, water is really, really important. And uh, the approach uh, in our waste water recycling treatment plant is what we call a closed loop system. What that means is all the wastewater is pumped to a central point, treated, and then ends up in a holding tank and is reused on the farm. Water is a vital resource for people and for industry. As key custodians of the region's water catchment areas and manager of much of the natural biodiversity that makes up this beautiful part of the world, Cape Nature is fully competent to maintain the natural assets that underpin the health of the province's green economy. It makes sense to set up your green manufacturing plant here and you will then be able to supply up the west coast of Africa, supply into Africa. When you link together the offering, so you link together the universities and the skills force and if, if a role player like Green Cape comes into it, a city like the city of Cape Town and our other surrounding municipalities who are open to the green economy, you offer a receptive offering to investors, you offer a receptive offering to that green economy.